Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Cherno. Welcome back to another reaction. We're going to be taking a look at Horizon Forbidden West. I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the new state of play gameplay reveal, which was released like, I don't know, like nine hours ago or so. Everyone's been tweeting this at me pretty much the whole day, so I'm excited to take a look at it. It's also trending on for gaming. Let's get right into it and take a look. You know, now that I actually have a PlayStation 5, I'm way more excited about all of these games. I was going to pick up Returnal, but I just didn't quite pull the trigger on that. It's like $130 here in Australia. And I was like, I don't know, maybe I'm just gonna wait for Ratchet and Clank to come out because I'm definitely getting right on top of that. So this is potentially also a game that um, I'm definitely gonna pick up. So let's take a look at the trailer. Well, more of a gameplay reveal. All right, let me just check those quality settings because that's looking pretty, yep, let's go 4K. Okay, so one thing I'll quickly say is that this is like a 19 minute video. What I'm actually gonna do is I might, depending on how things go, I might do what I did with the last kind of Ratchet and Clank trailer that I looked at, where I basically just watched the whole thing and then give, gave, my th gift, gave my thoughts at the end so that I'm not kind of disrupting the video all the time. But as, as always, it will be linked in the description below. So if you haven't seen the original video, I recommend you watch that first and then come back here to kind of watch my reaction. Hi everyone, my name is Matthijs de Jonge. I'm the game director on Horizon Forbidden West. Last year we revealed our ambitious new project and since then the team has continued to make... <laughs> Check out this lighting style already. It's so much shadow on like the right side of his face. ...on the development of the game. We are very excited and honored to give you an update in this state of play. And in the countdown video leading up to this moment, you have already seen glimpses of the Forbidden West. But now we have something truly special for you almost 14 minutes of gameplay captured on PlayStation 5. And you don't have to wait any longer. Let's get right to it. Easy, easy. Fantastic skin. Wait, what happened? Where's Erend? Ambush. Ruins are crawling with raiders. They hit our camp hard. We ran and they chased us down. Erend was away from camp. Scouting. I bet he's still out there. What was that? Raiders got machines on their side. Claw striders. You should go after Aaron. If they find him before you do, who knows what they'll do to him. No, I... You're injured. I have to... Uh, don't worry about me. I'll make my own way out. Get going. Okay. Yeah. What are raiders doing in these ruins? I hope Aaron is okay. Lots of foliage going on. That always makes me <laughs> makes me nervous. Lots of audio design, like there's the music is quite prevalent. I'm not sure if that's... I guess that would be part of the gameplay, right? Wouldn't be something they added onto this trailer. What is it? Better be 
careful. There might be more. Yep, another one. I need to get clear. That was close. strong here. <laughs> I've got so much to say, don't worry. I just don't want to interrupt the experience. I have friends, okay? I'm not just the ones you slaughtered. But when they come looking for me, there's gonna be trouble. I 
love these combat scenes. Back to the hunt. Raiders said they were heading for the old bridge. Maybe I can cut them off. Better get to higher ground, find a way. What is that, like honey or something? present for you. Oh, oh, oh. I found it, Emily. Huh? What'd you send me for? Right before the Raiders got me. You did good. Now, let's see where this thing will take us.
always said a storm was coming. That was suddenly a ten. Yeah. And it's almost here. Cool. We'll see what else is here and then I'll go back. So there you have it. The first gameplay footage from Horizon Forbidden West running on PlayStation 5. We hope you are as excited about it as we are. While we have you here, we would like to spotlight some of the new elements you have just seen in our gameplay capture. And to help with that, please welcome Ben McCaw, Narrative Director on Horizon Forbidden West. Thanks, Matthijs, and hello to all our viewers. Horizon Forbidden West is set a thousand years in Earth's future after a global catastrophe. People live on in primitive tribes, but they're no longer the dominant species. Giant, animal-like machines now roam the land, and they are extremely dangerous. The machines aren't the only threat in the Forbidden West. A strange red blight is spreading across the land, and it won't be long before it strangles all life. Aloy, our hero, is the only one who can stop the blight. But to do that, she and her companions will have to comb through the ruins of the old world to find the technology they need. So pretty. In this quest, Aloy has sent her loyal friend, Erend, into the remains of San Francisco to find a crucial piece of technology. <laughs> Erend San Francisco. encounters raiders from a rebel faction of the Tanakh tribe. They are Certainly an improvement. Fighters, but even worse, they've acquired the power to override machines. To rescue Erend, Aloy winds up fighting them. But first, she must cross the ruins to reach their camp. We face a lot of obstacles as we traverse the ruins of San Francisco. To overcome them, we've given Aloy some great new tools. Using the focus scanner, you can highlight spots that allow free climbing anywhere in the open world. The pull caster speeds up climbing and can get you quickly out of trouble. The shield wing allows you to safely descend from great heights or surprise enemies from above. With the diving mask, you can stay submerged as long as you like and take your time to plan a path around amphibious machines or boost through strong underwater currents. And to speed up overland travel, a variety of machines can be overridden and used as mounts or in combat. Combat in Horizon Forbidden West puts a strong emphasis on tactics and player choice. For close range combat, the spear is an excellent option. There's a range of combos that have different uses and effects. Valor Surges add a unique set of special abilities, one of which can be used to knock back nearby enemies. The spear can be charged to create a high damage effect that can take down even the stronger enemies. A wide array of different weapons is quickly accessible via the weapon wheel. A slingshot with adhesive grenades to temporarily stall machines. Bows with arrows that can strip armor and expose weak spots. A powerful launcher that fires spikes that explode on impact smoke bombs to temporarily blind enemies, or you can pick up weapons shot off from machines. The full game has many more unique weapons, and each of them can be upgraded on a workbench, but more on that another time. The player will need to be smart and creative and use all of the combat options we have shown to deal with a large variety of deadly machines. Sun wings in the sky, claw striders and tremor tusks on land, step maws in the water, even the seemingly harmless burrowers that you saw briefly swim by, they are all dangerous, and even more so when overridden by human rebels. We've only scratched the surface of the rebel threat, as Aloy will fight them in many forms throughout the game. And to defeat them, she must explore the open world to uncover the secret behind their power, and how that secret is related to her quest to stop the blight. And this is just one of the mysteries she will unravel as her journey through the Forbidden West takes many twists and turns. It's time to wrap it up. We will have more updates closer to launch and everyone here at Guerrilla can't wait for you to experience the full game. Thank you for watching. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I've got a lot to say, so let's go back and let's start talking about this because I didn't want to, uh, I wanted to, 
in general, I've talked about this in the last video, but I wanted to experience these a little bit more from just kind of a superficial graphics point of view. So it's really important that I watch it like, you know, with the audio, um, you know, concentrating on the game, feeling the game rather than pausing it and talking because that obviously breaks immersion. So let me know what you in general thought of this kind of style. And if it's not too boring to watch me sit through this, I, I have divided the video up into um, different parts, you know, with chapters so you can skip around if you want to. Anyway. Okay, where do we begin? Um, first of all, overall, uh, it looks really good. And one thing that I'm one thing that I'm really happy with all of these games is just the, the the environments, basically the worlds. I mean, we've talked about this before, but on Ratchet and Clank as well, um, on some of the other games that we've seen, like the the worlds are just so much more detailed and immersive. And that obviously is just we've seen that that trend happen in the games industry throughout like the entire life of the games industry. Really, it's so, like since the beginning, you know. We've just wanted to pile more and more assets into our worlds, into our scenes, into our levels, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then obviously, as kind of technology gets better and hardware becomes more, more and more powerful, we're able to do that. And you can even see with the new kind of Unreal Engine stuff that we've been taking a look at, or that we've been shown rather, um, you know, with the Nanite technology and everything, we're giving artists the freedom to just not even have to worry about detail, right? Don't worry about detail, just compose everything with as much detail as you like. And then the engine will decide what to kind of cull, what to cut, what to downsize as as needed. Um, and that's just, that's such, an, that's such a workflow improvement that I think coupled with, you know, the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, all this kind of uh, new generation of graphics cards as well, GPUs that are available for PCs as well. PCs are not excluded from this, obviously. Um, you know, we're just going to see just a, a, a crazy next generational leap, I think, in the kind of games and the environments and what we're actually seeing. Um, in terms of the game itself, I mean, I think that the way that they tie in these cinematics, um, I actually kind of want to put this back on, to be honest, just so I can Boy. hear a little bit of this. The cine Actually, speaking of audio, let me just start with the audio first. Flawless. The audio part of this is so nice the birds chirping in the jungle or in the forest whatever you want to uh, whatever you want to call it um the way that it felt to me was like a movie um and, and it's interesting because i want to take that a step further and say it felt like being in the forest it felt like being in nature playing this game or at least watching this trailer watching this gameplay felt to me as if i was like taking a hike somewhere um, they've done a fantastic job on the audio design, first and foremost. Now, um, the graphics, uh, the graphics have some issues, um, in my opinion. They're not like, it's not that they have issues. Um, they look great. And there are some really nice choices here in terms of like color and everything. But I think that they're definitely not the best graphics we've seen. And there are some noticeable artifacts. Uh, I will say that, first of all, the skin to me looks really good. Like... The way that they've done the skin in general looks phenomenal. And you can also see on her face here, this kind of like layer of fluff, this kind of like fur almost on the edges. I think that's a really nice detail. You can see it kind of along her arms as well. Um, that's a really nice detail. Now, speaking of which though, it's actually sometimes hard to tell, like this is clearly what looks like some hair, but here, I think what it is, is the depth of field. And that's one thing that I noticed quite a lot. The way that they seem to blend their depth of field is just not very precise, which is interesting because um, I don't think we've seen this too much from other games who utilize um, a lot of DOF. Like Ratchet and Clank, I didn't notice this problem at all, but you can see kind of, um, and it's, it's way more apparent, I think, in some other sections, but the depth of field in a lot of cases, especially around kind of more challenging elements like hair and stuff, it just feels like, it just feels messy. Here's a good kind of close up example where you can kind of see the hair on her face, which is really cool. There's a little bit of like flickering going around here as well. And in general, the hair and all these kind of hair related things do seem a little bit unstable i think in the beginning as well when he was like drinking the water you could kind of see that beard of his shimmering a little bit you can kind of see that here as you kind of go um frame by frame there's like some some issues it's hard to tell exactly what it is um and i don't think it's the light coming through because obviously the light everywhere else looks way more stable um 
some of the water effects as well were a little, uh, let's see, where does he spit out that water? Yeah, that's a good example around, around his mouth there. Like that kind of shimmering. Not exactly sure what's causing that. But in general, like the character rendering, aside from those minor things, the character rendering looks amazing. Um, the, especially like just the skin. The skin just looks just looks great. Speaking of the rendering as well, and the eyes look amazing as well. Speaking um, of the rendering, and you can see that you know some of the interaction like here is a little bit, unfortunately, not not that great um, with the kind of straw, I guess, poking out of what, whatever she's wearing. Foliage looks fantastic. You know these guys are kind of known for having good foliage. Um, the water, I'm really not digging that water. There's a lot of clipping going on in general. Um, I was actually going to talk about grass as well, but the water, you know, could could do with some work, I think. Um, the the sun rays are fantastic, and yeah, the greenery, the foliage, just the mix of colors, the blend of colors that they're using as well is something that I'm really enjoying in this um, so far. Also, notice how many leaves and particles are actually just flying around. You know, this is kind of these little touches because they don't really cost anything. Like, you know, having having these butterflies, having these leaves, having these particles floating around, they contribute almost like next to nothing to the actual frame budget that they have, meaning like how much performance they actually take, but they add so much, you know, um, and that's just a great attention to, de to detail. So I'm noticing a lot that the grass um, in general and this, this, like as she walks on certain foliage, the interaction is not really there. Um, it is definitely there somewhat, but it's not really tied to the movements that she's making. So she's running through this bush here and you can see it doesn't react at all. Um, and also the grass, if you actually pay attention, you can see it wobble a little bit, but it doesn't get flattened and it doesn't really seem to respond to how she's walking or what direction she's really walking. It just randomly shuffles around. Um, I don't know exactly why they've made that decision. Maybe again, this is you know this is this is not a finished game. Maybe that will change, and you can see it here as well. Because f like from a technical point of view, flattening grass and having that kind of interaction should not be, as far as I'm aware, that much of a ta of a challenge these days. Especially when they've clearly got like during that that fight, you could clearly see the sand being manipulated very well. Um, and that was very kind of, that was way more specific. I'll try and find it here. So yeah, like over here, as he like fires those lasers or whatever, you can see they're actually drawing these kind of trails and leaving these little kind of uh, dents, I guess, inside the actual sand, deforming that kind of sand environment. I assume that might just be some kind of texture that's being drawn and then, you know, used to either displace or whatever the terrain. Um, and that kind of effect could definitely be used over here with the grass instead. Um, and I'm not sure why it's not there. So it just makes me think that like, this is probably something that will in fact be done later. Um, just because, you know, from my <laughs> 20 minutes of glancing at this video, which by the way, <laughs> it's obviously, I'm laughing because it's not, a, it's a joke, right? But um, from my 20 minutes, I'm just not seeing it. I'm not, just not seeing why that's kind of not there. Um, Cause it, it, I think it should be. Uh, the environments and the colors, as I mentioned, the way that they blend all of that, it, it just looks really, really good. I really like it. Um, I do really like it. Again, the depth of field sometimes, especially around the hair and everything, as I mentioned, I think could be maybe refined a little. Um, don't know exactly what algorithm they're using, obviously, for calculating like depth of field and stuff. This also felt a little bit messy here. Just this kind of these blocky, I'm not even sure if they are artifacts. Cause yeah, I mean, I guess they are. It doesn't look like light should be seeping through this at all. It should be here, of course. You can see we're seeing these kind of kinds of light spots here shimmering, which aren't really, I'm not sure. It almost looks like they could be some kind of like lens effect or something, but I don't think so. I think it's just this. Cause you can see it's kind of like a, a blurred out version of this shape just blurred like a radial blur on that kind of light seeping through but then it's also here for some reason so some of these like sun shafts around around the tree as well just feels a little bit too kind of obvious if that makes sense the biggest takeaway for me like aside from graphics potentially even though this is kind of graphics related is the way that they tie in these kind of um cutscenes right and the actual cinematic uh, 
I guess, scenes of this game with the gameplay. It is absolutely seamless. And that's something that I really love. Going between gameplay and the cinematics felt so natural during this trailer or during this gameplay um, that like it was just it was just really good, right? Um, it was really well done. Uh, and also, by the way, these kind of water effects on the skin as well are really, really good. And you can see how much like he's splashing around. They were wading through the pool and it was all kind of, you know, those effects were there. Like, look at that. It's even making waves and all of that. That's why I'm even more kind of confused as to why the grass doesn't react that way. Because um, it definitely should. There's that example of the, you know, the hair kind of clipping through as well, which isn't that ideal. Can't say I'm an expert in hair rendering, though. Uh... Yeah, and then I think in this, this was kind of another example of like, you know, she's just walking through this, half of it's clipping through her. Um, these bushes seem to interact a little bit more, which is cool. You can see she's actually pushing them away. I'm assuming there's just some, some kind of like capsule collider on her or something like that, or a series, probably not. Maybe like a sphere or something that's just kind of, uh, you know, moving them slightly. Um, the combat felt really good. The combat felt like part of a movie as well. It was very well tied in with these elements. Um, like with kind of, you know, cinematic elements is, is my point, you know, this the way that she pulled out that sword later, like this scene, this was almost like a cutscene, and then stabbed it like into him or tried to hit him with it. Uh, that was really cool. You can see there's some like clipping as well of the feet through the sand over here, um, which isn't ideal. Uh, although I guess you could argue she's falling through it a little bit. A lot of the lighting is good. There's that kind of not maybe not finished water. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, but yeah, the greenery and the foliage, as I mentioned, is incredible. And just the density of these environments is is unreal. And I really, really like that. It's really cool. Some of the destruction was kind of raw, maybe I would say. So like, for example, when he breaks this, this just seems like it becomes a bunch of rocks, you know, um, it didn't really break in a very convincing way. This last sequence was honestly one of my favorites. All of this kind of cool UI just looked really, really just convincing. And this change of lighting and environment was so well executed, I thought. You know, and look at this. Like, this shot looks phenomenal. I almost think the lighting just looks better here. I mean, it's clearly more dramatic. Um, you know, there was some red stuff going on as well. Whereas before that, you know, it was just a kind of daylight scene. And daylight scenes are always, you know, more more challenging to make look good because they're just more bland you know something a bit more dynamic and exciting like this that's obviously going to look really cool um so yeah but again you know just watching the lighting on this having the scene change like that i i'm really impressed with the environment and with the way that they've decided to do the characters actually speaking of the characters as well the animation um i really really liked the animation as well everything felt really fluid everything felt really good um really convincing uh you know again going between gameplay and cutscenes and seeing the animation difference there to me it felt like there was none it felt really really good so whatever they're using for like you know uh animation you know blending you know inverse kinematics whatever um i think they've done a really good job with making sure that all of those animations play really really nicely Okay, so we've certainly taken a bit of a deeper look, I think, in this video. I just had a lot of stuff to say. I probably could go on. I should have I should have taken notes or something because I feel like I've forgotten half of it. But let me know what your thoughts were in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, yeah, this is definitely a game that I want to pick up for the PlayStation 5 when it comes out. Um, I think that it's I think it's just one of those games that you're going to, you know, either use your amazing sound system or put on some good headphones and just get immersed in, in the environment because um, I, I just think that they've done such a good job with this kind of environment. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Yeah.